related to this idea about how the classification of the alcohol affects how fast it reacts. Uh, it's found that this information is, is correct. Primary alcohols and secondary alcohols, as well as methanol itself, they don't react with hydrogen chloride very fast, and so um, that's not a very practical way to introduce chlorine into a molecule. We'll see another way in which chlorine can be introduced. Uh, so oftentimes you see hydrogen bromide as the example of a hydrogen halide that is the other reactant because it works well across the board. We can get HBr to react with essentially any of these alcohols. Chlorides only really work well if the alcohol is tertiary. And remember bromide, the hydrogen bromide, is more reactive than hydrogen chloride. And so uh, that's why it's able to do the substitution reaction. Uh, remember, hydrogen iodide is more reactive still, so iodide will react with all of these as well. But as I said previously, chloride and bromide are the main uh, reactants that we uh, are dealing with as far as halogen goes. So here's some classic reactions involving substitutions. And for this first one, being a tertiary alcohol means that we can easily substitute that OH group with the chloride. Um, oftentimes you'll see conditions mentioned, in this case room temperature, that tells us that we don't have to push very hard to make this happen. You just simply mix the alcohol and a solution of the uh, hydrogen chloride in water, which is called hydrochloric acid. And after a while you start to make the corresponding uh, chloride. Um, in the second reaction, this cyclohexanol here is a secondary alcohol, so wouldn't react as fast as the one above it, but with HBr, uh, that's a reactive of enough hydrogen halide that it can do the job. Probably would have to do a little bit of heating, a little bit of refluxing, and you could cause that substitution to take place. Um, this reaction on the bottom is one that we are doing in lab this semester, as a matter of fact. This 1-butanol is being turned into 1-bromobutane, and it involves hydrogen bromide and some heat to make that reaction work. And so, again, various amounts of heat may be required, and various amounts of time may also be required to get the corresponding reaction to work. But notice in each case, we end up with the halogen in the place where the OH group previously was located. When we do this reaction, which is the same one at the bottom of the last slide, uh, we're not actually going to add HBr directly. We're going to use this recipe. If you put sodium bromide and sulfuric acid in the same container, they will react to create hydrogen bromide. Uh, and so it has the same net effect, because once we have hydrogen bromide, we can expect this reaction to take place. And as it says at the bottom, we oftentimes don't worry about balancing a reaction. Um, we're really just worried about what is the structure of the organic product that we get because that is the product we're going to isolate and be interested in. And so in general we won't necessarily see reactions uh, in as much detail showing the fate of every single atom. Uh, oftentimes we just need to know what the essential recipe is of what goes into the reaction and what is the organic product. As I said, this reaction with alcohols and alkyl halides has been studied to death. And one aspect of making sense of why some alcohols react more quickly than others and what's going on with the different speed of the hydrogen halides, it involves knowing intimately what's happening in the reaction. And those previous equations for the reactions show the overall effect, but oftentimes it's a series of elementary steps that leads to that overall change. When we talk about those individual steps, we're talking reaction mechanisms, and there are two such mechanisms that work when we are talking about alcohols undergoing reactions. So we're going to see what these mechanisms are and how they are distinguished from one another.